My name is Charlie Hummel. I live in Wayne, New Jersey, and I've been collecting Edisonian or Edison artifacts for the last 35 years. It's been my love and my life. Through the collecting, I got to know a little bit more about Thomas A. Edison. He had 1,093 patents. Tonight, we're going to set up, display, and record on one of Edison's earliest tinfoil phonographs from 1878. Of all his inventions, the 1,093 inventions, it was the phonograph that he loved the best. He also said that the electric light bulb was what gave more to the world. So tonight we will demonstrate the early 1878 Edison tinfoil phonograph. is well made. It's made in 1878, invented by Edison in 1877, manufactured by Bergman, who was his machinist. There's only two things different I did with this tinfoil than Edison's tinfoil. It's one is I'm using heavy duty Reynolds wrap to record the sound. The second is I changed the stylus. The original stylus was a steel stylus to a sapphire stylus. Let me see what I can do with uh, You have to smooth it out because you don't want any, any bumps in it when you put it on the piece of paper. On the tinfoil, I'm sorry. And by doing this, you prevent it the stylus from sticking or grabbing. There's two sides to this. There's a smooth side and the shiny and not so shiny. I tend to leave the shiny side on the outside. I don't think it makes any difference. Okay, so that's what we need for the tin foil. You've got to be careful you don't put any wrinkles in it. And we'll install it on a tin foil. The most important thing is that you get it centered and it's nice and tight. So you put the first piece on and you lock it in. At the beginning they used to overlap the tinfoil, it didn't have a slide in it, and you would have to wax it together. So by holding your hand real tight, it presses it nice and tight up against the mandrel. And by turning the mandrel, this is trial and error over a period of about 10 years. Not supposed to happen, but you have some leeway, leeway in here. Put this back. On the inside, rip off the extra tin foil that's here, and make sure that this is pressed down. Then you curve the sides in, you get it nice and tight. That's the very secret of making a good recording. So there's no bumps, tears, or anything on the tin foil itself when the stylus runs over it. I particularly like to put some oil on the tin foil. I'm not sure if they did that in the beginning, but what that does in my mind is makes it nice and smooth and it doesn't dig in when the stylus goes over. Okay. This particular phonograph was invented by Edison in 1877. By 1878, he was producing them to be sold and to be used as demonstrations throughout the United States. This one was made by Bergman and sold to a gentleman in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, which I bought it off to another gentleman in Manor, Pennsylvania. The only difference I had with this when Edison manufactured this machine was one, I changed the lead foil to tin foil because it's very hard to find. I used heavy duty Reynolds wrap instead of the early lead foil. Two, I changed the stylus. The very early styluses on the tin foil or talking machines were made out of steel, highly polished steel. I changed it to a sapphire. And the diaphragm was actually made out of very thin 
metal, and I changed that to mica, which gives it more flexibility. And just a little difference I did helps me record. I changed the lead foil, which this is the original box that it came in, and it has more lead than tin in here, and today it's very hard to find lead foil. And you bought your records by the pound, so much a pound was shipped to you. This came, this original case, it came with this machine. By changing the tin foil, I used this heavy duty Reynolds wrap, and also I changed the diaphragm. The first diaphragm were made out of steel. I used the mica, which is more flexible and gives me much more uh, control over what I'm doing. What I'm going to do now, I already placed a piece of tin foil uh, around the mandrel, and I'm going to record the voice. You have to understand that this machine, back in 1877, the human voice has never been recorded and played back. This is the first machine, what Edison did, record the human voice and then play it back. I'm going to even say the words that Edison did on his first uh, talking machine. Testing, one, two, three, four. Mary had a little lamb, her fleece was white as snow. And everywhere that Mary went, the lamb was sure to go. I say this machine is like life. It's what you put into it is what you're going to get out of it. So you really have to make the diaphragm vibrate, which makes the stylus vibrate, so it makes dots and dashes in the tinfoil. Let's put it back to the beginning and see what we have. People were astonished that the machine can talk. People thought Mr. Edison was a ventriloquist or there was something, somebody else around the machine talking. As he played it back, this is what the people heard. And that's basically the simple way to record your voice and play it back in an early tinfoil phonograph.